What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Welcome, everybody. It is a beautiful, sacred Sunday morning. Um, and I want to welcome everybody who's coming into our Zoom room. And for all of our Zoom room friends, please let us know where you're from. Where are you geographically coming from? And don't be shy. Turn on your cameras. We love seeing you. And if you want to keep your cameras off, that's okay, too. I also want to welcome everybody watching live on Facebook or the YouTube channels. And come on in and join us in the Zoom room. Um, we've got some beautiful, beautiful presenters. And we're going to be talking about some really important things. How to love ourselves more. How to have sensual intelligence. When was the last time you heard those two words put together? Well, we've got the woman who literally wrote the book on it with us today. And, of course, we've got Larissa Stowe. And we're going to be talking about the most important form of love of all. Self-love. So if you want to come on into our Zoom room, it's really easy to do that. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com, and register. And once you register, you'll immediately get links to all three of the shows that we do. We do a show every Friday night, every Saturday night, and every Sunday morning. And what we do in the Awakening World is we take a topic and we explore it. And... One of the great joys of my life these days is when I get to collaborate with my friend, Larissa Stowe. Um, many of you know her as the incredible musical artist. Um, others are watching and know her as the leader of Larissa's Shakti Love Warriors. And we're going to connect with them and learn all about that today. And the topic, and I, I'm going to have Larissa share a little bit about it, and then we'll meet our other two guests, and then we'll drop into a meditation. But the topic that we decided as we lead into Valentine's is how can true love create heaven on earth? So with that, Larissa, as my co-creator of that topic in this wonderful weekend, and I've so loved working with you, what's that mean to you on this Sunday morning? That means listening moment by moment, you know, to that, that voice within ourselves that sometimes is like a whisper and sometimes it's really loud, but honoring that we are so connected all the time, like all the time to source that we are. And if I'd love to say this, like you've been getting in there that we are truly the body of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are the hands, we are the eyes, we are the ears that we are that. And I know we've talked a lot about that for a long time. It's like something we've known, but now we're beginning to really embody that, making that divinity real within ourselves, like saying yes to that, saying yes to embodying that love, that heaven, the frequency of heaven within our bodies and choosing that powerfully, you know, 
absolutely mm -hmm. choosing it powerfully and giving ourselves permission to, I would say, let go of the old paradigm, which is I'm a victim, which mm -hmm. is things are happening to me and really taking our power back, our divinity back, which is this is happening for me. I chose to come into this world, even as challenging as it can be, even as challenging as, you know, our body temples and life around us can be that we are here to wake up and we are here to embody love, but to do it together. That's yes. the whole point. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I sure do enjoy doing it with you and with everybody that's joining. I see a lot of wonderful friends. Paul Sterling's in the house, the Wild Abbott. Um, our two other presenters, I want to briefly introduce them, and then you're going to really get to know them as they're going to lead practices. We've got, uh, for the first time for me, Sean Ree Nato is with us. Hey, Sean Ree. <laughs> good morning. So good to see you. I'm so glad you're with us. And Sean Ree has a brand new book coming out all about sensual intelligence. Now we're gonna go in depth and you're gonna lead us through some practices, but what's the what's the elevator speech about sensual intelligence? Mm. Sensual intelligence is the art of feeling and uh, the art of knowing and feeling your body. Um, and it's expression in the world. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, that ties right into what Larissa was just saying, you know, about really being, you know, whatever you want to call it, God, great spirit, life, living through us mm -hmm. and, and honoring our body temples. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so many people, especially earlier, uh, I'm a baby boomer, so I'm going to own a lot of baby boomers were on this, I want to get out of my body. I want to ascend. I want to leave my body. And I'm noticing that the millennials are like, no, we want to be in the body fully, right? And that really is the point. The body is such a beautiful gift. So I'm really looking forward to learning from you today some ways that we can have more real genuine connection to our body. Beautiful. Um, well, you just met Larissa and Shanri. I know that you know Don because you were on Don's self love show. Yeah. Um, and for everybody else, this is Dawn Light. She's a longtime uh, colleague. Um, she does the self-love show with Trish uh, every Thursday morning. And we're going to definitely talk about that. And um, as a way of kind of starting, Dawn is going to lead us every Sunday morning. We do a kind of a multi-denominational or non-denominational drop-in. And um, Dawn's going to lead that for us this morning. Oh, wonderful. Can everyone hear me okay? You sound great. Yes. Yay. I'm so excited to be here with everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So just to expand further into that, you know, unconditional loving that we all embody, right? That's our opportunity with this meditation. So I encourage you to just close your eyes for a moment and drop into your heart space. And if you even wanna put your hand, like both hands on your heart or one hand on your heart and one hand on maybe your you know, lower abdomen to just feel connected to your body, your womb space if you're a woman and your lower abdomen for a man and just really feeling into that sacral area and just allow yourself to drop in and use your breath. So I encourage you to just take three deep, long centering inhales and exhales. And you can even like sigh out a little bit just to let go of anything from the weekend or around you so you can just be fully present here. And I encourage you to call on your inner counselor. So the inner counselor is the higher self, the part of you that's the wise, wise, wise voice of God within. And I'm just going to call in. So Father, Mother, God, creator of all that is, Divine Mother, we invite you into this sacred space, this container of loving. We initiate the love here amongst us. And we ask to be blessed in this moment 
be blessed in our life in all ways. We ask for the loving to just wash ashore and clear and cleanse our psyche, our body, our mental body, our auric body, all parts of our body in every way. We ask for the blessing and clearing today in any way we need it in our life. And may this transfer over into all souls on the earth and the earth plane, that the earth be cleansed and lifted as well. Through this prayer, we ask for your miracle spirit to wash ashore in our life and your blessings in the way you see fit for our purpose to, ex you know, exponentially grow and in that keen, keen, keen knowing of listening to you, spirit, and be guided by you today in all ways, in every day, that your voice be louder and more pronounced in our inside of our vessel, and that our body vessel be clear and really tapped in so that we feel the aliveness and the joy and the pleasure of living this beautiful, human, sacred, spiritual experience with you, spirit. We thank you for the opportunity and the moment to be centered. And I just encourage you to take another deep centering breath and acknowledging your aliveness right here, right now with spirit. You are co-creator with spirit, co-creating the blessings, the joy, the upliftment, and the centeredness. Thank you for the opportunity to serve spirit. And we are so humbly grateful to just consistently come back to the loving nature that we always are. And it is so. So it is. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. It's always so spontaneous. Like I just kind of channel and like they're unique, every single one. Trisha and I do it actually before our show, every show. So it's so fun to have a channeled prayer come through every day. I love it. <laughs> well, today we're kind of wrapping up this weekend of exploring true love, heaven on earth, and focusing on self-love and sensual pleasure. So I want to ask each of you if you'd be willing to share maybe a personal story of how you have learned or are learning Deeper levels of self-love. Let's start with that. Let's start with that. And um, uh, Louisa, do you want to go first? And then maybe Shanri and then Don? Um, I would invite someone else only because I'm still landing in this body right now. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so let me get, war let me get you know, warmed up with everyone here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for taking care of yourself. See, that's <laughs> self-love. She <laughs> just modeled it. Go ahead, Don. I can jump in. Um, so it's not necessarily a personal story. It's more of a process, I would say, with myself to cultivate self-love. So as you know, being in a human body, we have moments where we get triggered, right? And it's our learning opportunity. It's our growth edge. It's something that we're um, you know, leaning into and healing. And so I find that just that simple practice of putting my hand on my heart and like grounding into my body and applying love, just learning to open the column of light and open the column of spirit inside of my body vehicle and tune in and have a greater listening, just have a pause. Even if the thought processes are going on or whatever the thing that it is inside of yourself, because how you relate to the issue is the issue, right? So it's leaning in and allowing ourselves to really explore what that is. And because that opens us when we get it on the inside around what spirit is teaching us in that moment, it elevates your self-love. It expands your self-love. It expands your aliveness, your connection to spirit. And then that ripples out into your outer life through your relationships, you know, everything in your life, it can show up in every area of your life. So I find that having a just gentle, loving practice, no matter where I'm at, even if I'm out in the world or, you know, and I need to go to the bathroom and like look in my eyes and wash my hands and remind myself that I've got this, I'm loving essence. I'm connected to spirit at all times. I'm guided. I trust myself. I trust myself. I trust my life. I trust all parts of myself, right? And just having that loving dialogue 
no matter what's going on, really has helped elevate my life to like exponentially next levels, bettered all my relationships, you know, really helped save my marriage in a time where we were really in a, you know, kind of hard place. Now we're not, we're in a, you know, beautiful expanded place, but this is many years back when I was learning this and it's been an ongoing journey of learning, right? Like learning to grow our self-love capacity. But I can honestly say that just that simple thing of giving myself to her permission to feel it all and expand my love, no matter what it is, I can always tap into my love. Mm, beautiful. Thank you, Dawn. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, I want to, I'm going to mention real quickly, um, and I'll probably mention it again. If you're not already watching, every Thursday morning, Dawn and Trish do a beautiful show called The Self-Love Show. Um, of course, Trish is who I've partnered with for a year and a half also, about the same amount of time you guys were doing Self-Love Show. Trish and I were doing our Friday night show. And it's a beautiful show. And Sean Ree has been on The Self-Love Show, actually. Um, and so just <laughs> tell us a little bit, and I brought Sean Ree on since so she's been on it, what, uh, what are some of the things that take place every Thursday morning on your self-love show? What, are you asking me or Sean Ray? You well, I'm asking you, but I also thought Sean Ray might want to share what it was like for her being a guest. Yeah, on yeah jump in. No, so I mean, it was, it was beautiful. Um, for me, it was, it was just, just, just being in the presence of you all and just like just oh it's like a whole self-love show when we when we connected i was only able to be on for a for a of an abbreviated time because my internet crashed and so it was um so even that was it was a practice of being you know in self-love and self-forgiveness and spaciousness and also in in like a lot of gratitude um for you know for the for the graciousness in which we all like navigated that situation. <laughs> we have to demonstrate a lot of self-love when our technology fails us, right? Yeah, yeah. I know, it's like, you know, you've got a show going on and then all of a sudden the internet goes out. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, 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 again, and that's daily self-love of when that happens, then how can we cover for each other? and. And then, yeah, so that that's actually, who can relate out there, Oh right? my gosh, yes. And it was, <laughs> it was wonderful because Trish and I just, you know, it's such an authentic conversation. So we just went for it and had an authentic conversation and gave you the space to jump in and jump out if you needed. And the show was wonderful, even, even amongst the technical difficulty. Cause you're, the thing is, is your energy is so beautiful and like what your message you carry is so powerful. So that, that short snippet was such a powerful message, even in the funky technology. Yeah, yeah. And it makes me actually think about, um, you know, like what you asked earlier about like, you know, my, you know, experiences with self-love mm -hmm. and that was like what, what happened, you know, on your, on your show was deeply that experience. Like for me, I find that self-love is such a humbling mm -hmm. experience um, because like, there's, you know, we can do it and like, you know, oh, I love myself. Everything's going great. La, 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 la. I can forgive myself. But when you, when it really comes down to it, when things are like going wrong, when your life is going wrong, when you're, when you're showing up in a weird place, like showing up for self-love is, is, is so hard and so humbling because you, it's like, the, it's, for me, I feel it's like a, it's like literally the act of like, oh, here's this funky part of myself that I'm actually having judgment around and looking at it, seeing it and being like, okay, I, you know, I see you, I accept you, Whew, I see you, I accept you. And it like literally feels like, um, I, you know, like it's something that I feel in my body, like I could like literally feel my stomach, like, you know, like, you know, churning and trying to like curve around this, these parts of myself that I'm, you know, that I'm trying to, that I'm wanting to, that I know that if I can hold inside of me and be in, and be loving, that it will be beautiful. But 
there's like, you know, there's like at the same time, there's this, there's this resistance. And so, I mean, I think about that, you know, with, you know, with coming on the show and like having all the technology blow up or also for me um, with, you know, with my, my book, having to push off the launch, you know, like wanting to show up. It's like, I want to show up in this way. I create, you know, if, you know, I'm going to show up in this beautiful, bold, powerful way for myself. And then there's this like, like disappointment. And then it's like, how can I give myself space to be human, to make mistakes, to push something off. And so I feel that self-love is like, oh, it, it, what it feels, it feels like an internal, like, you know, internal exercise. Like, you know, I have, I have this form of myself that I want to be, but then there's this like beautiful form of myself of who I am. And like, it's allowing myself to, you know, to soften into the, the realness of who I am and the, you know, the experience of who I am and actually having that be something that is sacred and beautiful. And that's not, you know, it's not like, yay, it's, it's all good. It's like, oh, it's kind of hard, so. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for sharing that because that really took us into the humanity of it all. And uh, I would love to hear maybe what Louisa or Don have to say about that, about, yeah, that difference between the way we want to be seen or the way we want to be. And then when there's like this big gap <laughs> between how we want to be seen or how we want to show up and how we are seeing ourselves or how we are, are showing up. That's, um, that's a hard one. It's a huge a huge piece, I think, for a lot of us to get through. And I would say even more so, I'm seeing that with um, my generation. I, I feel like the younger generations these days, at least I see with my, my daughter who's 21 and her friends, there's a lot more of an acceptance of exactly how they are. It's kind of like letting it all hang out. This is who I am. And, and they don't have issues with you know, being absolutely drop dead gorgeous in their pictures or then taking these selfies where like, they're like, ah, you know, like <laughs> where they look like they just got out of bed and they're, you know, they're going every which way. There's this beautiful expression of, of just totally accepting everything that I, that I can see. And I know that there's levels for them too, but compared to the generation that that I grew up in, we're a little, we're, I think we're the ones that are like, okay, come on, you know, come out, you know, giving ourselves permission now to really um, make friends and create an integration between those parts that maybe we didn't want everyone to see before, mm -hmm. you know, that we felt like if I can, and let me speak for myself. I find when I start saying that we, Bashmanamaha, I realize, okay, Larissa, take a step back and take, you know, self-reflection responsibility. I can say for myself, you know, that this has been quite the journey of um, taking down all those social masks and challenging myself to be completely authentic, even when it's really uncomfortable um, and really vulnerable because it's it's as we talked about last night and even the night before it creates intimacy and then it's just so much more fun when we can be immediately like um goofy because i'm a goofball you know <laughs> like, we can be goofy we can be like yes i'm tired you know we can show up we can come as we are in life and that's made all the difference in my life is to be able to be like, okay, you still love me. You all are still going to love me. Even if you see, you know, this gawky side or this frightened side. And there's something profoundly um, heavenly, so to speak, because there's so much love when we allow ourselves to be that way. And we allow ourselves to be received as we are. So that's, that's been a big shift for me in my life huge hmm. i want to comment on that for a moment 
Um, and then I'm eager to hear what Don and Sean have to say. Thank you. Um, I grew up in LA in the entertainment industry. And so, and I obviously I'm the oldest, I'm a baby boomer, right in the middle of baby boom generation. And so there was so much pressure for illusion. I mean, when I grew up, it was all about your image. Um, you know, the big joke was, you know, within 30 seconds, you tell somebody how successful you were, right? You know, it was like very, very image oriented. Um, and so, so much of my life has been learning to not lead with, you know, with that. Um, and I'm still working on it, by the way. Um, the other thing that I want to riff on for a moment is we all do want to be loved and accepted for exactly who we are. And the greatest gift we can give to our family, our friends, our loved ones is when they are down, when they are having a gawky moment, when they're having, when they're struggling with their own self-esteem, self-love. Mm -hmm. That's the time to remind them of how magnificent they are. But not, don't just flatter, right? But pick something specific. So in other words, if Larissa was having a, a rough time, it wouldn't be, oh, Larissa, you're so beautiful and everybody loves your voice. It would be more personal. It'd be, you know, Larissa, I just noticed that whenever we're gonna talk, I get all excited. Like yesterday, um, I was just waking up from my nap and you called me and I happened to see, because my ringer was off that you were calling. And literally, I get this rush of, ah, Larissa's calling. <laughs> wow. And that's how I feel when I come into your presence. You just, I immediately feel this lift of my spirit. So that's how I experience you. Mm -hmm. And then we did end up talking and you were sharing with me gawky stuff. I even told you that you remind me of Gomer Pyle. Well, you did. <laughs> That's a hard one for some people. It was the, it, but it had it was within context. Yeah. But sure. And notice what I did as a modeling. That was real, obviously. Mm -hmm. Is I helped her to remember how she helps me to feel, how how she impacts me. So when we can help people to remember their positive impact on us, that's a wonderful gift to give. And I want to thank Marshall Rosenberg who taught me how to do that or gave me that little tool. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate We appreciate you, Marshall, and how you taught Scott because it's such a blessing and such a gift mm -hmm. that you give all of us. Oh, thank you. <sighs> right, so last, last question on self-love for any of you. Other practices, when, when you're really in the pit, when you're really struggling to connect to self in a loving way. Any other practices that anyone wants to share? Definitely. Go Don. I find that when I'm really, really struggling, you know, really triggered, uh, I have a, I have either two tools that I go to usually. And one is a writing practice where I just get it out. Like, just get it out. Like, you know, like a dump in a way, just like exactly what I want to say, curse words and all, if they're, if they're in there, you know what I mean? Just blah, get it out, just write it out. And then it's very important to, there's two ways you can do it. You can get it out. It's called freeform writing. And so get it out and you can just go and burn it and release it. Or you can go back through and be really precise and go back through and look for the judgments in your writing. And then one by one, put your hand on your heart and forgive your judgment of yourself, of the situation, of the person involved, you know, and, and really like, because it's, there's a spectrum of learning going on in your, in your experience. And, you know, judgment is the root of what causes patterns to begin with. So when there's crystallized judgments, what happens is there's a core belief, a bottom, bottom, bottom belief, and they just stack, 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 you know, crystallized judgments and the ego loves that it sinks its teeth in it. And that's what draws and attracts the pattern, the circumstance, the people, the crazy situation to unearth 
that material that really isn't our authentic self. It's a barrier built against us, right? Because really we're loving essence. We're all sharing in the same loving field. And the only thing that is really our spiritual work to do is to seek and find the barriers built against love that are naturally in our DNA, their belief sets and structures passed down from intergenerational patterning, from parents, from family, from teachers, you name it. We pick them up and most of the time our young self is making the choice about things way before our cognition, before seven years old. We're already got these really deep ingrained things we've chosen to believe about life and ourself. And so in our adult years, it, we spend our adult years re-excavating that stuff to see, oh, wow, this doesn't, you know, and it's an awakening to it truly, because it, you don't realize it's there until some circumstance comes. And I love to call them stackers. You know, it's like stacks that these situations and we've all had it where it's like pressure, 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 stack, 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 stack. And then before you know it, you're like exploding and like, ah, you know, freaking out. Right. I mean, everyone's had this human experience where it's like the car window breaks and you go in, you drop something and then somebody says something really right to you. And, you know, just it stack, 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 stack. And then it, you have this um, uh, deeply unresolved Ugh, feeling where your stomach's in knots and you know you're way off center right so it's really about how can I get back to self-care how can I get back to my loving nature I'm love right and remind yourself of that and go and hunt out the judgments but sometimes we need an actual process to like get it because we have to understand what we're going through before we can let it go <laughs> And so it's really important to, you know, we can't just bypass it and go, okay, I forgive it because that, and that's why people have an issue with forgiveness because they, they don't do the process of fully understanding what the lesson or the learning is here so that they can fully release. Because if you're not getting it on a deeper spiritual level of what, why this has happened, what's the meaning here? And what is my soul learning from this? And then you can actually move into true compassionate self-forgiveness. But it takes an, a process to do that. And so these tools that I'm sharing are very, very helpful. So freeform writing, write it out, find your judgments, and then go and one by one lovingly, I forgive myself for the misidentification of. You know, that word in particular is very powerful, misidentification, because it's actually the, a true misidentification. You're not seeing it clearly. You're not seeing it through the eyes of spirit. You're seeing it with a lens of perception that's not accurate. And that's what causes the discord and the funky pattern to begin with. So um, I hope that's helpful. You know, hunting out the judgments is where the personal freedom lies, I find. Beautiful. So many good points there. Um, we're going to hear from Lisa and Shawnee in a moment. I do want to start reading some comments and questions coming in from our audience. And so I'm tracking what's going on on Facebook Unify, Facebook Shakti Love Warriors, and Facebook Love Coach Academy, and in our Zoom room. So I'm doing my best to track it all. You're amazing. Um, uh, C.D. Clayton writes, the opinion you have of yourself is making or breaking your happiness. What you believe about yourself influences you more than anything else in life. It's only if we learn to truly love ourselves can we love others without neediness and attract high value friends and partners. Mm -hmm. Right on, that is beautiful. He will be a guest on a future show. <laughs> so just a reminder to everybody, give us your thoughts, give us your questions, give us your comments. Um, and I'd love to hear maybe, Larissa, Sean Marie, any thoughts of what Dawn said or where you'd like to go next? I, I would love to just comment on like when, when you bring up the judgments, um, what I have found is that where our, where our judgment comes up in our life, it shows us where our love ends, so to speak. It's when that judgment becomes more powerful and has more of a magnetic field um, than anything else, we literally, our hearts will shut down in that moment to ourself or to others. So what you're saying is just, it's like right on point. And I think, um, with myself, that's been one of the most profound ways to kind of unearth 
like why I'm contracted in life. And when I work with my beautiful people um, in my sessions, that's one of the, the pieces too, is that I see it's kind of, it's kind of um, tricky. It's really, really tricky. Judgment is really tricky because it kind of hides in certain ways. And a lot of times we don't even notice that we're judging and it can seem like really subtle um, in, in how we are experiencing life or other people. Just the smallest things, you know, how we don't like, oh, you know, she did this, you know, he did that and he's thinking this. And it's just, it's a quality that sometimes we just take for granted. We're so used to having those judgments without even thinking about it. Like it's just normalized. But it's those judgments that literally that's where the heart starts to shut down. And it really shows us that. So even in the smallest places that we judge ourselves and one another, um, like getting in there and going, oh, is that so? And am I disowning this part of myself like when I'm doing that to them? And taking um, assessment for that and looking at that. So that was, I love that you brought that up, Dawn, because it's a, a really important piece. I think it's fundamentally um, the piece to be looking at, you know, for growing our hearts and growing our containers to love more. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm, I, I'm judging right there, you know. Okay, let me take a look at this. It's a, it's a real commitment to do that. You know, one of the kind of riffing on that for a moment, and then I'd love to hear from Sean Ree. Again, this is a Marshall Rosenberg teaching. When have I, when are we creating an enemy image out of another person? And any time we look at another person or at ourself and we go, what an asshole, what a bitch, what an idiot, we've just dehumanized them. You know, when soldiers are training and getting ready to go to war, no, we don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> Affirmation, though. There it is, exactly, right? Barking, right? Asshole. <laughs> woof, woof, bitch. Woof, woof. <laughs> so thank you. Good reframe there, Larissa. Um, when we do that, we've dehumanized them, you know? And so a wonderful commitment. I think everybody watching probably has the, you know, I want to create more peace in the world. I want more love in the world. Well, the greatest way to start is committing, I'm never going to do that again, or noticing when we have dehumanized ourselves. oh, I'm such an idiot, or dehumanized another person, he's such an asshole, commit to never doing that, or at least noticing when you are doing it. Yes. Because nobody is an asshole. Nobody is a bitch. They might be engaging in a behavior that's uncomfortable or doesn't meet our values. That's real. Mm -hmm. But everybody is a beautiful, divine emanation. Um, and so that's a wonderful way to take the judgment piece that Larissa mm -hmm. talked about and take a step towards that, like just really making that commitment to notice when we're dehumanizing ourselves or another person by assigning a label onto them. Yes, and, I, and I'm curious, I know we're going to get to this, but I'm curious about like connecting this piece of judgment um, and our sensuality. That's <laughs> so funny you said right? that. Right? Yeah. I, I was actually about to say something to that um, in terms of like, you know, I was talking about, you know, we were talking about practices of self, you know, self-love. How can we bring ourselves back there? And Don, you spoke about, you know, free writing. Um, and then Arisa, you talked about, you know, judgment. And for me, one thing that's really, it's really important is to know, you know, to realize and recognize that we are, we are in bodies. And so our spirits, our egos are experiencing these things, you know, through our bodies, we're experiencing each other, um, we're experiencing ourselves. And so one thing that's really interesting is um, that we can actually be in relationship with our bodies and the journey 
that our bodies and spirits go through in terms of, you know, how does, you know, how does judgment, you know, actually show up in my body? How does, you know, tell, you know, calling someone like an asshole or a bitch, how does that actually show up in our bodies? How does it shape our cells? Which, you know, this is a, it's is a, you know, using our senses, our sensuality is both, you know, how we, how we are and how we express in the world, but then also how we are receiving ourselves and receiving information. And so one thing for me, like when we, when I do a practice of, you know, of self-love, it's, it's a combination of um, doing something that is, that is embodied and that is, um, that is right, that is writing. And so it's like, you know, being able to combine, you know, mind and body or, or spirit and, you know, in our, in our embodied experience. And mm -hmm. so one thing is like, really, like when we are like in that process of, of judgment, whether it's on ourselves or on, on another, like to actually be like, ooh, where, you know, where is that? What part of my body is like, is like turning or crunching or blocking? Because literally um, we are creating, our bodies are creating energy. They're creating energetic blocks. So they're creating energetic openings. And so a lot of times these things are happening unconsciously, subconsciously, um, and is creating communication within our own selves and with others. And so for me, I like to, let's say like creating a, creating a practice, creating a practice of self-love is actually first um, creating a practice of, of embodiment and honoring when I'm out of self-love. It's not like believing it, but just honoring. You're like, oh, this is, this is what's happening. This is what's so. This is how it's feeling. And that's a way that we can, it's, it's not to, and then we can actually go through the journey because all, you know, all of self-love and all of like letting go of the ego, et cetera, it's not like, ah, you know, it's all gone. It's, you know, it's, it's a journey. And, you know, it's like, so it's like, okay, I'm feeling, you know, feeling my body, you know, how does, you know, in, in this structured society, um, we aren't really, uh, when we're children, we're given lots of space to just like throw the temper tantrum. And like, you know, wild animals, you know, when they're, when they're going through something, they, they can like shake, you know, they're like scared and like their bodies shake and they tremble and they get, you know, all of that is like, you know, that gets, it allows the body to actually go through the motions of, you know, of shaking off the shame, of shaking off the fear, of like actually like being with it and then getting to, you know, getting to that, getting to the place of, you know, of, you know, of realigning. Um, and so for me, like, especially like, you know, when, when we have time, like when, you know, when, when you're alone, when you're alone, just actually allowing, when you're noticing yourself in like a crunchy, non-self-love out of alignment place, actually be like, oh, okay, ooh, this, you know, this is what it is. This is what it feels like. It feels like, rah, 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 you know, it's like, ah, and actually like meet it, meet it, let it be seen. Cause that, you know, when you look at like kids or whatever, when they, you know, when they're going through temper tantrums, you're not like, okay, you know, you know, be quiet or, you know, just get over it. No, you're just like, you give them space. You get, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you're, you're going through this, you know, this real experience, give them space. And then they go through their thing. And then eventually it's like that energy will, you know, will slowly or maybe quickly with, if it's seen, you know, um, self-love is like self-seeing, self-intimacy. So it's actually seeing and meeting ourselves there. And then from there, creating, crafting, feeling realigning into that into that loving state for me it's the, the first step because then a lot of times whenever I've worked with people it's like a lot of times we'll like bypass you know just like the an honoring of the of the out of alignment state not like a oh this you know I'm just gonna like stay there and indulge but just like oh this you know this is what it felt like this is what it feels like you know and so I'm, you know I'm with it and then now I'm actually oh now I'm with this, you know, with this calm state, with this breathing state, with this parasympathetic nervous system state. And then from there, being able to open up to this, up, you know, this other side of the divine. I really feel that some, you know, as much of the things that we do that are not self-loving, that are not loving to others, they are as much of, as much as that non-self-love or not seeing of others is like, you know, is blah, just on the other side of it is, you know, is the path, is the path towards love, is the path towards connection. And so, 
you know, let's say you call someone a bitch, like, okay, you know, the energy of that, the energy of bitch or like asshole is like, you know, tightness. And then on the other side of that, what is wanted is openness and acceptance. And so all of these different things, they show up in the body. Um, they show up in, um, and they're just, they're just like, you know, two sides of the same coin. It's, it's a compass. It's a compass towards our moments of non-self-love and hatred and anger, et cetera, is actually the compass towards love, the pathway towards creating a world of, you know, of love and acceptance. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful yeah. tools. Thank you. We have a special guest who's come in. Um, this is a very spontaneous, I'm a very spontaneous kind of person. I'm really enjoying being spontaneous. So just to let everybody know, um, our show usually goes till about 1130. We are going to hear a special song from uh, somebody that I know that um, Louisa and I are big fans of. Jaya Lakshmi is in the house. And um, she's doing a concert tonight. I saw that on Facebook. I said, hey, come on onto our show. Um, would you sing a song? And we'll help let people know about the concert that you're doing. And so um, we're going to hear from Jaya Lakshmi in a minute. Um, and uh, Louis, maybe you and I can both do a little introduction of her. Um, and then we're going to kind of swing into Larissa Stowe, Shakti Love Warrior Land and uh, what they do. And then we're going to come back and hear more about sensual intelligence and self-love. So, um, uh, and again, everybody, give us your thoughts, comments, questions. We'll do our very, very best to get to as many of them as we possibly can. It's great to have all of you with us on Facebook, on Zoom, and so on and so forth. Jaya Lakshmi. Um, I first met her, you, um, back when she was touring with Lost at Last, and the band would stay at my home uh, in Bel Air when they were in the LA area. And it's like old home week, Jaya Lakshmi, which believe that last night I was with Ohm. After my show, I went to a, I went to a, you know, Ohm lives around the corner from me. And uh, I went to a party and there was Ohm. So we got Ohm last night and you today. And Larissa, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to share a little introduction. I love this woman. <laughs> she is, oh my gosh, Jaya Lakshmi, you are just so inspirational. Um, I've had the pleasure to know you, like I can't even remember how far back, but I, I think we met when we were both playing for Swami Vishwananda. Of, and actually, I, I interviewed you on Sacred Sounds Radio. I used to have an internet radio station um, for years and years. And I interviewed you on the show, right? Mm -hmm. And then I met you in person and have just been a huge fan. Love playing our music on, on our programs. And getting to know you on a more personal level over the years has been such a gift and a blessing. Um, her transmission is just powerful, just really touching and powerful and of the heart. So you get ready, everyone. You're in for a huge surprise and a huge <laughs> gift of medicine from this beautiful goddess. Mm -hmm. So much heart medicine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, because so, I, I, you know. Yeah, we haven't even done a sound check. And before you play, our theme all weekend long has mm -hmm. been how can true love create heaven on earth? Mm -hmm. And I know you're somebody who's been in that exploration uh, through your life. Are there any thoughts you'd like to share about that? Uh, well, it's just that process. I think so many of us are in who are awakening uh, to our true love. Uh, and you know, for me, it's been about falling in love with myself, I think for many of us, and not always reaching for the other outside of ourselves. I mean, that's really a big teaching, a big lesson for so many of us right now, is learning how to access that and find that love within the masculine and feminine and the, in the sacred union within our own being. Uh, and, you know, some of us, we I've talked about it in my life, uh, but I think I'm at a time in my life where I feel that's really 
it's really happening. <laughs> it's finally happening where I don't really feel like grasping. Or I don't feel lonely. I, I feel so fulfilled. I feel so good. And I'm, I'm single and I'm not in a relationship. And uh, that's been really helpful <laughs> for me right now to just get clear with, with the divine within myself and that, that empowerment to just uh, that sovereignty, you know, and yeah. I think so many of us are finding that right now as we, our practices are, um, you know, there's that accruement over like 20 years or 30 years of yoga and breath work. And it's like, finally, like, I feel like, oh, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's here, <laughs> you know, like next level. Yeah. You know, thank you. I mean, I, we didn't even prepare, but thank you for answering that question. And yeah, I've, I've been single for almost three years. I've never gone that long. Right. And um, there is that thing of really learning to love ourselves at a deeper level and, and, and cultivating our connection to source. And I know you have a beautiful, beautiful connection to source. Uh, it comes through in your music so beautifully. Mm, thank you. Yeah. So should I just start the song? Yeah, go. I, I, was, I was thinking about what song to sing and I, I, I'm, this is just what came through. So I feel like it's really good for today. Um, it's just celebrating where we're all at. <clears throat> we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk. Dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance. We walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk. We dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance. We walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk. We dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance. Holding one another as sister and brother, holding one another in love. Holding one another as sister and brother, holding one another in love. <laughs> Sister and brother holding one another in love. 
light, we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk. We dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance upon the light, we dance. We walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we walk upon the light, we Yeah, that came through in a ceremony when I was in Hawaii last March. Oh. Yeah, and I had this vision of like, like I was on medicine, you know, and I had this vision that there was like this ribbon of light coming down from, you know, the heavens. And there was all these beautiful people walking on that beautiful ribbon that of light, of highway, the light of, you know, and they were holding hands and it was like children, you know, it was like our tribe, our star family. And it Phew. was that we were all merging with them. Like we were that, we were those people, we were those beings. Yeah. Wow. And so it was very like this harmonizing, like this great harmony came through that song of like feeling what that is viscerally, like, you know, to feel that harmony that we would actually really be able to hold all of us, all one another and in, in, in love, brothers and sisters and, you know, just unconditionally, it's just, you know, <laughs> oh so beautiful so beautiful so moving thank you thank you scott for asking oh my god i mean, i love the spontaneity of it so i want i want to give people a little bit of um information for any of you that are new to jaya lakshmi um definitely go to her website it's her name and then music so it's jaya lakshmi music.com j-a-y-a L-A-K-S-H-M-I music.com. Put in your email address and uh, get on her mailing list. I'm doing that right now, although I'm already on it. Um, and then she's got wonderful, all these beautiful records and albums here. Um, so definitely go to her website, get her music. You know, it's so important. You all have heard me say this many times and I'm gonna say it many more times. We've got to support our musical artists at this time. It's really important to support them. Um, the pandemic has been, it's been rough on a lot of people. <clears throat> and I think it's been hardest on my musical friends because the festivals weren't happening, the concerts haven't been happening, clubs, bars, restaurants haven't been happening. <clears throat> and so we need to support them. And we get their, so much of their music for free um, and so let's go to the websites, let's buy directly from them or through Bandcamp, um, which I learned last night is, a, is, is one of the better ways to do it. Um, and also when they do have a special concert to attend. Um, so you got a homeopathic dose of Jaya Lakshmi, but I know where I'm going to be at uh, 6.30 tonight. She's doing a live stream winter concert. Tell us about uh, what are you going to be doing tonight, Jaya? Uh, well, this is, so I've been doing one live stream a, a season. Uh, I thought that would, it just made sense because, you know, I, I like to observe the cycles of life and nature. So this is the winter live stream. And uh, it, it falls right before Valentine's Day. Uh, and so the energy in the field and the collective is really coming in about 
our beloved and who is our beloved and how do we celebrate our beloved and so that's what it'll be tonight uh i i actually don't really have my set list you know I, i'm i'm kind of i'm channeling it in today just feeling it out like what i want to sing tonight and who i want to sing to and of course i sing kirtan i sing mantras so i'll be singing you know to radha and krishna i'll be singing to sita and rama the divine couples I'll be celebrating that divine love, that balance of masculine and feminine, and and that play, the play that happens. Uh, so that comes through the music. And then I'll be singing some of my own love songs, just sweet love songs that come from my heart. And, and I have a topple player, Ankush, who, I, who I've toured with a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's an Indian man. He's from Gujarat, and I've been friends with him for like 20 years or something. And and so he'll be joining me tonight. And he just had a baby. <laughs> he just had a baby, his first wow. baby. Yeah, so he's he's trying to break away. I'm like, come on, you can do it. You can take a little break. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, he's he's on call like all the time now. But yeah, so I'll have an amazing topple player. And it'll just be me and him. It's just super sweet and simple. And I really actually like it that way. Mm -hmm. Right now, I just, I feel like it opens more space for me. Mm -hmm. to just, you know, channel energy and sound. And, you know, what comes through, it's relaxed. And, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm certainly gonna I'm gonna be there, and that's at six thirty tonight. Uh, I have put into the chat room in Zoom, Unify Facebook, Shakti Love Warriors, uh, the link where you can get your tickets from Bright Star. It's only fifteen dollars, but you know you can also name your price, yeah. and that's really beautiful. I love that uh, yeah. more and more people are going in that direction. So let's give her more. Let's. I love that. Let's let's be abundant here. All right. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, I am going to do it, but last time I did it, um, my credit card got flashed. I was donating to a, a fundraising event last week. And as I was doing it to show everybody how to do it, my credit card got flashed. So I'm going to do it off camera. Um, we're going to turn it over to Larissa and the Shakti Love Warriors in a moment. But while I've got both of you on, just... A, a big part of true love, I think, as we all are discovering, is our relationship to the divine, whatever that means, uh, as Rumi called the eternal beloved. And I just, having two of my favorite musical artists together at the same time, I'd love for both of you just to share maybe a little bit about how your connection to source, to spirit, to whatever you call it, has has led you on your journey of musical artistry. Larissa? Well, I, I was going to say, I know, I was going to say Jaya. <laughs> 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 um, I would love to hear, just because I've been sharing a lot this weekend, I would love to hear what she has to say, oh, honestly, okay. since we're going to be okay. doing our mantra here really quick. So. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, well, it, okay, in a nutshell, let's see. <laughs> Um, uh, well, music has been my medicine, uh, through and through. I mean, that's really what it's been a gift for me. And just to, ha just to break through, uh, you know, the shyness around it. I know a lot of people have shyness about singing or, oh, I can't sing. I mean, I remember being that way a little bit, you know, <laughs> like, uh, I don't want to sing or my songs aren't good enough or, you know, that kind of stuff that comes in. But, but it's like, it's just, it's so powerful when you do source it, it just like comes through like a fountain and it just, it's like this, you know, one of those, like when those black holes go, you know, like those beams of jets of light. And it's kind of what happens. Like when I sing, I feel like I just get in that, like that, that, you know, jet of light and, uh, and I feel so good there. I feel like this is it. So, uh, you know, really just not even thinking about what I look like or what I sound like. That's really where I want to be, right? That's where I want to get, where I'm just like channeling, you know, the love and the everything that's coming through. So, but that, you know, it's, it's always, it's, it's, a, it's a process, you know, working through the ego and, you know, it comes up, you know, oh, I'm not good enough. Or, don't you think that's beautiful though like I, I just want to acknowledge what you're saying and you know you're so dropped into your heart about that and I think that's the lesson for all of us it's like that's that is what it means to embody 
this divinity is that you are saying yes you know to having source come through you when you sing it is coming through so like so beautifully i know all of us here who are you know who listening to you like totally feel that that light and that divinity just coming through you mm. so if you i i invite you <laughs> I invite you to really trust that you've got this, yeah. you know, that when you are singing, you are that divine channel to know that that's always happening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We, um, Jaya Lakshmi it has been wonderful. And I know where I'm going to be at 630 tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. We are going to put the full attention on Larissa uh, because we are merging these the global peace tribe and Shakti love warriors are coming together. Um, and if any of you watching, if you have not already joined on Facebook, put in Larissa's Shakti love warriors group and join it. Um, it's an amazing group. It's such a beautiful community. And I know many of you already are a part of it, but some of you aren't yet. Join. And because every day they do what's about to happen right now. Yes, we do. And right now we're in the middle of a, a 41 day because we wanted to end on um, 2 20, 2022. But I have a feeling. I started feeling this needs to extend because this is um, a mantra that it gently activates the kundalini which is something i'd love to talk about as it relates to sensuality and um and creating heaven on earth and so this is the adi shakti mantra and it's om i'm cream shreem sa adi shakti Nama. So we're going to be doing this together, singing this 108 times. I have a backing track because when I'm not leading it, the other leaders in the group are so that we all have kind of like this homogenous um, backdrop together. And so I invite you all, wherever you are, just to drop in with us and and sing this with us, chant this with us, and allow your, your kundalini to do whatever it wants to do, which is connecting you to source inside out. Um, we're going to open up with Om Namo Guru Dev Namo, which is the Adi Mantra, different from the Adi Shakti Mantra. And we're going to do that three times. So I invite you to take a deep breath in with me. Om Namo Guru Dev you to take a deep breath in and hold an intention today within your heart holding the breath as long as you can and surrounding that with love All right, so let's do this. I see Ava's on here. If my Shakti Love Warriors, I think Mackie's on here, could type in for people the, the mantra. That would be awesome. Oh. 
Namam Rim Shrim Sa Adi Shakti Namah Oma 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 Rim Shrim Sa Adi Shakti Namah Om Ma Rim 
Bring shrimps I shall be a my own 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 Bring shrimps I shall be a my Om mam bin shrim sa ara shakti nama Om mam bin shrim sa ara shakti nama Om mam bin shrim sa ara shakti nama Om 
Thank you. Thank you, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beloveds, beautiful beings for activating, activating the divine source within yourself, the kundalini, the divine masculine embodying that love and that light and saying yes to being divine vehicles of heaven on earth within you. And yes to life. Thank you for joining us. Mm. <clears throat> so beautiful to see all the different people, you know, going with it. And I, I want to acknowledge we have a lot of people in Unify right now that are just loved that experience. And, you know, a reminder, everybody, that every day by going into the, I, I love where it happened to freeze, the way you're reaching out. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> But as I go to your page, there's a great <laughs> shot. There it is. It's, that's Larissa extending an invitation to everybody to join her Shakti Love Warriors group. Every day there's a beautiful meditation, chant, prayer, musical offering. Um, anything else you want to add about what happens here? It's just an incredibly beautiful community of people that are so supportive and loving and kind. Um, that show up on a, a consistent basis to be love and to drop into heart-centered awareness, even through all the shiitake that we feel in our life, <laughs> all the, the hard stuff that comes up. I really appreciate the commitment. I see beloved Mariah, one of our beautiful, incredibly um, you had your hand up, so I, we didn't know if you wanted to say something. She no. says no. She doesn't need to be that. <laughs> she says no, please. No. <laughs> but she is, um, along with, I see Eva here, and I'm wondering if we have other leaders here too as well, but just incredible examples of modeling what it looks like to have all of our human stuff come up, you know, and the suffering come up and and create a loving presence within that, like a, a beautiful self-love that we're talking about today. You know, having that commitment, um, no matter what, to continue to focus on that love in the, in the midst of feeling really challenged. Like Mariah has been very challenged physically on a physical level with chemical sensitivity. She lives, she has to live in a metal camper because she can't even be indoors. And she leads 
um, on our in our Shakti Love Warrior group. Um, courageously, she continues to lead, to show up, to be supportive as she continues to heal, which she is healing herself. And through this community, she's spoken a lot about how the community has been a great source of healing for her and helping her to um, embrace herself and to stay committed to that healing rather than opting out. So it's you know, she's one example. Eva is a beautiful example of how she brings so compassionately in the human and shares so much of her wisdom with the group and leads these mantras um, mm. as we're in a, our 41 day practice. It's that consistency and our leaders have each other's back. You know, we, we have conversations. Okay, I, I can't do it today. Can you do it? And we jump in for each other and there's just so much love and so much support. And there's people, we invite people in our community to, to, to lead. It's not like only you can lead or you can lead. It's like, okay, do you want to lead? And if you feel inspired to lead, you have medicine and we want to find a place for you to get to share your medicine. And that's what the Weevolution is all about, is about linking arms and hearts and really seeing the medicine that we all have to share and the wisdom and that just pops exponentially. Mm -hmm. So can't say um, enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read a couple comments from Unify. And then I think Eva has something to say. Um, Judy writes, uh, Shakti Love Warriors, I love you all, Kula and Larissa Show. Stowe, Stowe, Show. Larissa Show, Stowe. Um, <laughs> uh, Sonia writes, uh, we have sound therapy, we have Reiki, we have each other in our Kula. Um, Terry Kutrun Lo writes, what you going to do with all that love? Kara writes, big love to Maria. Uh, Sonia writes, long live the Shakti love warriors. Um, and Sonia writes, as soon as I get my four singing bowls, then I need to have a sound therapy session and I will be jumping in. So those are just some of the dozens of comments from Unify. Um, Ava, what would you like to share? I just want to share how much I've enjoyed um, my time with Larissa and Shakti Love Warriors and participating as one of the leaders and just the immense amount of support that this group has been for me in the last six months. It's been really incredible. And being introduced to you, Scott, it's been really great. Um, I participated in the passing of one of the dear friends, um, oh, Richard, yeah. Richard. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder of the name. It's been many months and I wasn't connected to him before that, but really appreciated, um, just everything that you guys both bring to the table. So yeah, thank you. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you. Ah, yeah. <sighs> I normally we end at 1130 and I think we're going to go a little bit longer so everybody has a chance to conclude. I'm going to go to um, Dawn because Dawn needs to take off. And so I want to give Dawn a chance to share final thoughts and also I'm going to let people know how they can get more Dawn. But Dawn, thank you for being with us tonight uh, today. And what's uh, what stood out for you? Uh, anything you'd like to express? Oh, I just have so much gratitude for today and this love bubble we've created. It's been so beautiful and uh, such full circle for me, for Jaya Lakshmi to be on the show with, with me. I saw your show back in the day when it was lost and last in Santa Barbara, like years ago. And so I was one of those with the painted face up front, like, you know, all, all into it. So we all wanted to right be Jaya Lakshmi. You, like, yes. So that's a, like nice to meet you officially. And yeah, beautiful music. And yeah, today's been such a lovely joy expressing, you know, gratitude and love and sharing around how to always find our way back, no matter what is occurring in our life, you know, that the outer circumstances do not have to dictate our inner landscape. Thank and you. that's, you know, our inner landscape creates our outer. And it's like, the more we lean into like loving our inner landscape, which is really the truth of who we are, then you know, that's our connection to source. It never goes away. No matter what's going on, it never goes away. We never lose connection. 
even in the hardest moments. So it's like, this is the deep, um, you know, work I do with my beautiful beloveds that come to me for support in my coaching practice is I help you untangle all the parts that are really challenging the roots to get to the roots of what core patterning is. You know, um, I helped heal my own father wound in my journey. That's been what my main work in this lifetime has been is really unraveling that deep part. So I really support women in that way. And um, I'm just so blessed to have the sacred work in this way because it's changed my life and changed everyone else that I work with life. And, you know, and not only just with the father wound, but mother wound, sister wound, right? It all shows up in a myriad of ways. So it's really just giving a really big opportunity to lean in and explore what that is. So if you're interested, like there's, um, there's, this is my program, Unleash Your Sovereign Queen, which will be coming soon. And it's really about this inner work of really coming home to greater levels of trust and really unraveling the distrust piece, because that's been the core place of my core quality that I've had to embody in my own life is coming home to greater levels of trust, because everything in my younger years told me not to trust. So I help I help people with this sort source back to deep trust. And so there's so many other beautiful parts around, you know, really expressing loving essence, how to make self honoring choices, you know, deeper levels of acceptance. There's a lot of parts of this beautiful program I've created it last year I work, I worked the whole year last year creating this program so I'm launching soon. And if you're interested, Scott can also put the link tree in the in the chat box. And there's um, lots of links. The self-love show is there. Uh, the YouTube channel for the self-love show is there. And also, if you're interested in just exploring a conversation to get on and talk about what your core wounding is and how we can support you in unraveling it. I'm so here sending you so much love, unconditional love to your life. May each being on this planet be blessed with so much love, light, and just high vibe frequency to live into our purpose and express our full authenticity and our gifts, because that's what we're here to do. Wow. Thank you, Dawn. Have a wonderful day with Carlos and the kids. Um, mm -hmm. God's blessings, and thank you for thank being you. with us. Yay. Blessings. Happy Valentine's Day to everyone. See you on Thursday. Self-love yeah. show. Thanks, Scott. I'm going to bring Sean Ree back on, and of course, Louisa is still here. Um, Sean Ree, thank you for your patience um, being with us um, and would love to learn a little bit more about sensual intelligence and uh, and ultimately how people can connect and work with you. Yeah. Um, so just first of all, sensual intelligence is pretty much my, my, my life's work. It is the embodied, artful, knowledge of feeling and being. And I say all those words on purpose because embodied, it is an intelligence of the body through the body, artful because we, our lives are to be, are creatively interacting with ourselves and we, with each other. It's not just like, oh, cool, do the thing. So this, um, the embodied artful knowledge of feeling, you know, our feelings, our emotions and being out in the world. And so, um, all my, all my, all my teaching and my coaching is always like this. It's an embodied, it's an embodied journey of reclaiming, reclaiming our joy, reclaiming our, the wisdom of our bodies, reclaiming our spirit, reclaiming um, all the things that we have lost or put in the shadows um, that, that, you know, that, that are ours, that are our, our birthright, that are our, you know, our pure joyful expression. And um, I wrote, I wrote a book. Um, called Central Intelligence, The Lost IQ, Reclaim the Wisdom, Power, and Joy of Your Body, um, that, is, that takes us on a journey of, of doing that. So if in it, there's like there's sensual poetry, like poetry that is, like, that is supposed to titillate and open up the senses. Um, there are activities in there to help you to um, to help you to really connect to connect to your heart. Look at the places underneath that you know that are covered with shame. See how shame like you know locks your body, and how can you like unlock your body and like you know start being able to see and feel yourself as like this whole beautiful being. Um, and so yeah, and that's you know that's that's you know how I work with people. It's just like my my purpose in life is to help people to embody, embody their joy. And 
one of the ways like it's connection of sense of the senses like taste touch smell um sound um and sight and how you know how we can be in sacred loving relationship with you know with all of who we are um not just ourselves but also like in community beautiful well, I'm going to take people to your website and we're going to take a look at the book uh, that's coming. Um, here's her website and it's her name, Sean Ray, S-H-A-W-N-R-E-Y, SeanRay.com. And I love that picture of you. That's so beautiful. It just looks so joyful. Um, it's a gorgeous picture. And, um, and if you click here, the book is coming. Um, and this is where you can pre-order. Um, you'd learn more about it. The Lost IQ. I, I so love that you're doing this, Sean. Ray. It's so important. I'm going to bring our other co-host um, on, uh, Larissa, as well. So definitely, and people can pre-order your book, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can pre-order it. And um, if you, you know, and when you pre-order it, you'll get a um, an audio um Yes, yeah, so you'll get an audio of, of the first two chapters. For me, I just love using my voice to take people on journey. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be coming out early March. Right now, I'm just doing the last. There's just like last minute things that are happening, and so that's coming. There's gonna be a quiz, so you know your central intelligence type with it. So it's gonna be, and when you learn that, then it will like direct you towards the different chapters that are going to most that are going to most um, support you in in that embodiment. So, wow. I can't wait to take the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn. Uh, Sean Ray, thank you so much. Um, it's been just a delight having you on our show, and I sure hope you'll come and visit us again soon. I'd love that. It's been so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, all right. God's blessings. Thank you. Well, Louise, I kind of. Here it is. We are wrapping up another wonderful weekend together. And it's been it's been amazing. It's been powerful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all the wonderful people you bring, your Shakti Love Warriors, but most of all for bringing your authentic, gawky, wonderful self. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you for receiving all that I am and I receive all that you are and all these amazing, beautiful beings that have joined us today. Thank you so much. So much. I still wanted to get into that conversation and we're out of time. Like to just to acknowledge that, you know, that there's that deeper conversation about Kundalini as it relates to um, self-love and and um, creating a heaven on earth. But I think we're going to have to do that another time. Well, all right. Thank you. Everybody stick around for a minute, though, because there's a couple of other things I want to share. Um, uh, you know, Louisa, again, you know, she's been serving so many different roles for us this week. She's been playing music. She's turned on her Shakti Love Warriors. Um, but she's also, of course, a musical artist. And let's support her, just like I'm encouraging us to support Jai Lakshmi. Um, and you can get her new her latest album and her music by going to her name, LarissaStow.com. LarissaStow.com. And so I want to really encourage everybody. Let's support Jaya Lakshmi. Let's support Larissa yes. Stowe. Let's go to their websites. Let's buy their music. It's really, really, really important for us to support our artists. Um, and speaking of supporting artists, a reminder that the Global Peace Tribe. I and myself are hosting Cornflower and Kristen Hoffman tomorrow night. Um, two of my absolute favorite musical artists. They've both been on my shows many, many times. And they met through Global Peace Tribe. They met through Saturday Night Live. She's like the queen of looping. He's like the king of looping. And they, this is now their fourth concert that they've done together as a Global Peace Tribe event. And um, so tonight we get Jaya Lakshmi. Tomorrow night, we get Kristen Hoffman and Cornflower. So if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, please get your tickets. Um, and it's at Sonic Source Activation. Sonic Source Activation. And I'll put that in the chat box. And then finally, I need people's input on something. Um, I am going to be collaborating with Eden Amadora. We're going to be teaching a course 
Um, it's going to be a six or eight week course all about how to integrate our divine feminine, our divine masculine, heal the pain from the past. And we need to know from you when you would be most likely to participate. And uh, so we have a, we put together a poll and, oh, but I don't have it on this. It's my Zoom webinars. So for anybody watching on Unify or Facebook, would you be most likely to come on a Saturday morning or a Sunday afternoon or a Wednesday? Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon or Wednesday? When would you be most likely to make an eight week, six or eight week commitment to a course starting in late April? Um, and just put in the chat box which of those options would be most likely. Saturday morning, probably 10 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, Sunday afternoon, probably 2 o'clock Pacific time. Or Wednesday afternoons, probably 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that. So let us know Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon, or Wednesday. And if any of those are good for you, that's helpful too. You can say, hey, any of the above would work for me. Don't worry, we're not making that commitment yet. Um, but we're going to really enjoy putting this together. It's going to be a powerful, powerful event. Um, and it really kind of grew out of, um, and many of you were there, uh, we did an event last, two weeks ago today, that's gotten 230,000 views, Louisa. Um, it was spontaneous. Eden and I did this uh, event on integrating the Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine. We threw it together last minute, and um, it's gotten 230,000 views. That's incredible. Which is amazing. It's <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> it's like, where did that come from? So we've kind of interpreted it as Spirit's way of saying, okay, you know, this is really an important topic. This is an important subject. Um, and so we're putting together a course. And before the course, we are going to be doing, and this is the last thing I want to just let people know about, before the course, we are going to be doing a special event on Sunday afternoon, March 20th, which is, of course, the first day of spring. And um, this event is going to be uh, a uh, with Eden and myself. Here we go. I'm pulling it up for us to show people. There we go. So on Sunday afternoon, March 20th, we're going to be doing kind of an introduction to this course we'll be teaching. And it's Spring Forward into Love with Eden and Scott. Um, and so for people, if you want to register now, you can. And people that register this weekend are going to get three free gifts from us. And I'll put the uh, link into the chat box. I'll also be posting all of this, how to get Jai Lakshmi tickets, how to get tickets for the concert, uh, how to register for what Eden and I are doing. That'll all be on my profile page on Facebook. So there's a lot going on with the Global Peace Tribe, a lot going on every day with Shakti Love Warriors. Um, and it's beautiful to be creating all these things together with everybody. Mm -hmm. A blessing, a blessing to be with everyone. And thank you, Scott, for inviting me to co-host this weekend. It's been such a beautiful, beautiful community of love. That is the that is the takeaway for me is there is so much love in this community and it continues to deepen and grow with all of us. And I could so feel that. Can you all feel that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're doing it, right? You can Hard feel time. like just this beautiful community we're feeling that support and receiving that support so beautiful thank you you know help us uh, build the community please you know i know that we have so many wonderful people that uh join us every week but then i noticed on unify a lot of people are saying this is my first time here i love this let your friends know um let your friends know about the awakening world about uh the shakti love warriors let people know about what we're doing because that's how we do grow. And um, I've said it many, many times and I'll say it many more times. We are the imaginal cells finding each other. We're the imaginal cells finding each other and coming together 
through the Shakti Love Warriors, through the Global Peace Tribe, celebrating music, concerts, and also learning. Uh, you know, that's why we call it the Awakening World. Learning sensual intelligence. Learning how to, you know, I'm going to bring, um, I didn't bring Jerry up yet, but our mystic abbot Jerry, a lot of people are joining his Puerto Rico experience. He's got 10,000 acres that he's the steward of in Puerto Rico. And a lot of people that have come through the Global Peace Tribe are coming out to Puerto Rico to visit, and some of them are moving there as he builds his retreat center. So there's all sorts of amazing things happening through the Global Peace Tribe. Um, so come to our events and uh, share the word. And thank you, everybody. And anybody watching the replay, we love you too, because we recognize that most of the people actually end up watching the replay. So everybody is welcome. God's blessings. And we'll see you tonight at Jaya Lakshmi's. Take care, Much everybody. Love. Much love, everyone.